Hey guys, still here at Stevens Pass. Wanted to make a video that talks specifically about progress capture uh, devices or systems or whatever. Um, this is just like a little bit of a close up. And you can use these in crevasse rescue mainly, uh, but you can also use them in rock rescue systems if you did build your own specific system for hauling. Yeah, sorry about the noise there. I am right next to the freeway, but uh, I'll. I will do my best to cut out any of the super loud sounds. All right, so the first one I wanna show you guys is one that's very common for those of you who are rock climbers, and that's simply the ATC and guide mode right here. In addition to being able to belay with this, I can actually build some, or use this as a progress capture in a haul system. The issue is that no matter what carabiner you use or what device or even what size of rope, there is going to be a lot of friction to this system comparatively to anything else that I'm going to show you. But if this is all that you know, or if this is what you have, like if you do need to haul someone up in a rock climbing system and it's already set up, then you might as well stick with it. Or if it's what you're most comfortable with, uh, then it's a great device to use. This is also one of the more foolproof devices than the other ones that I'm going to show you. So. If you're nervous about the rope slipping or the rest of your haul system, that's a pretty good one to use. So the next th the next one I want to show you guys is something really simple. It's simply it's a carabiner and a little third hand type material. So what I did with my third hand material here is I tied a prussic hitch. Uh, in this particular system where you don't have a prussic miner, uh, climb heist would be totally acceptable as well. Yeah, I can just clip that into the same carabiner with the other rope draped over. The hitch side is going to be my load end, and this side is going to be my pulling end. So as I pull rope up, I'm going to have to hold this down in some way. So this system is really great because it uses the least amount of equipment, and it's also nice if you're rescuing in a team of two, three, four, or uh, any more than one, because you're going to have someone here to hold this while you're pulling the person up. Another thing that's worth mentioning with this system is uh, the longer material you have, then it can often be more advantageous. So what I did is I tied my double length sling here and I can clip that in. And now I actually have a ton of space. So after this whole thing holds together, so if I tighten this up, then pull it out, just having this whole amount of line right here as I can pull in I can get a really big reset by sliding this all the way down so if you have nothing there to mine the prussic then it is more advantageous to have a longer piece of material especially if you're solo rescuing it, again if you have more than one person on the surface it doesn't matter as much but this is really nice if it's just you because I can actually go all the way down to whatever I'm rescuing, pull all the way up to my anchor, and then in one fell swoop, slide this prussic down. It just gives me more time to pull the prussic in before it meets this carabiner. So going back to my little prussic now, why is it so important to pull the prussic down before this thing meets this carabiner? Well, it doesn't really matter too much until the prussic gets looped through the carabiner and now we have an issue one is it will actually prevent me from pulling so I'm kind of like stuck with where I'm at and then the second reason is as I release the prussic to catch on this side of the rope to hold whoever I'm hauling out it'll butt up against the carabiner a lot of times it'll butt up against the carabiner and you can just see how I'm, I'm pulling on the load side and rope is just sliding through the prussic. So the carabiner itself is mining the prussic from the wrong side. So that is a big pitfall of this system is you wanna make sure that your prussic hitch does not go through this carabiner because when you go to release rope to reset or whatever, it can mine on that prussic and then you just lose all of your friction and then your buddy goes back down the hole. So I've already talked about ways how to keep this prussic on the correct side of the carabiner. If it's just you that's managing it, you can grab your ATC and I'll pass it through the rope just like I'm belaying off my harness. Just like that. So the ATC is not in guide mode at all, 
but I can, as I pull rope through, that ATC just holds the prusik in place, so that way it won't flip through the carabiner. And when I, I go for the reset, it'll just uh, bite on the rope. Now this is where I think it is nice to have a prusik because a climb heist grips the rope in a different way and it could be harder for this thing to mine it throughout the whole system. So that's why I prefer using a prusik. Some other considerations that are good for this is the material now for your prusik, you want it as short as possible. So this is about as long as it goes. If I had a longer piece of material, I can tie a knot to shorten it up. But if I have like a super long piece like my double length sling, essentially, it has to, um, when I go to reset the system after pulling in, the rope has to creep out a certain amount of inches in this case. But if I put a double length or super long sling, like a cordelette or whatever on here, and it goes down like three feet, I have to lower my buddy down three feet until this thing catches. The shorter the material, the more advantageous in this setup right here. Of course, again, if you have someone here to mine the prusik and shoot it all the way down, that kind of omits that issue, but... If you're gonna, it's really nice to just keep it all high and tight in this one area. Helps with inspection, helps making sure everything is working correctly, and it helps keep everything neat in a rescue system. I also wanna say it's totally fine to separate these carabiners into two of them. Both lockers, it works just the same. And if you're someone who doesn't wanna keep it all on one locker, totally fine if you wanna do that, I respect that. It's like, this is how I would set it up right here. Okay, stepping back now, less fancy forms of progress capture. If you wanna get real old school, all you need is two non-lockers. This is what some people call the Alpine clutch. Um, but you wanna get non-lockers that are basically the same. I, I would say exactly the same. And so I got two of these old BD Oz's. Flip them in. This won't really work with two locking carabiners. Um, there are a few on the market where it will work, but uh, unless you have specific ones made, you got to use non-lockers for this. The way I like to do this is I assign which carabiner is going to be the load carabiner. So in this configuration, this one in my right hand is going to be the load. This one's going to be the other one, I guess. And I'm going to clip both of them so that way the load strand is on the side with the load carabiner. And then I take my brake strand, I'm gonna call it, and I bring it back around in a loop and I clip it to the load side. And then that's it. And so now I have my load strand right here and pull in strand. Uh, all it does is it really pinches the load strand on top of the pulling strand. So I can pull from the pulling strand and if I pull down on the load, it locks. So that's pretty much it. Uh, this one does have a bit of downfalls. It doesn't have a huge amount of friction, depending on your carabiners, it could be a bit of friction. But one thing is, it's pretty easy for this whole system to fall apart. You can see how it can get in a non-conducive orientation fairly easily, especially if this rope slips up, then all of a sudden it doesn't work at all. Uh, and then other times, you know, things can just get unclipped and stuff like that. So the common practice now is you have to back it up with a clove hitch of some sort and so there are different points in a crevasse rescue system say where you could back this up with a clove hitch i just attached one to the master point like that if i was hauling in a rock system this is how i would choose to back it up just a little bit of slack into a locker right there and i can still pull up on this and then lock and then pull slack through the clove hitch in a uh, crevasse rescue situation we may add that clove hitch somewhere else in the system uh, but we'll still have this backed up in some way. I personally think the garter hitch is most useful when I'm ascending myself out of a crevasse or something like that, and I put this as some form of progress capture on my body, usually for my foot loop, but you could put this on your waist loop and just have it backed up with that clove hitch. I don't use it as much in progress capture in larger systems like crevasse rescue. Here's another interesting one. I have my carabiner and I'll make a Munter hitch, whatever way you want to make the Munter hitch. I'm going to make sure the Munter hitch is in its taking in position. So right here would be the loaded position. This is my load strand. And then I'm going to flip it so that way it's in its taking in position. And then what I'm going to do is clip carabiner to the anchor, another locker. And I'm going to clip the, the 
brake or the load strand coming out of the Munter into that. That's how I've found it's the least amount of friction. The only issue is no matter what the least amount of friction is, hauling through the system is going to have a lot of friction, but it is still a self-locking device like that. You still have it backed up later in the system for crevasse rescue and you can haul off of this. There's just a ton of friction, but if it's all you got, then it could work for sure. Okay, so bringing it back home now with my personal favorite device to do any sort of hauling for rescue systems or whatever with the micro traction. So overall, this thing, while it can be a little bit less intuitive on loading it, uh, it just takes some practice. Just having this in the system right here. I can pull this way, it locks this way, that's how it goes. You can follow the pictures here or there. By virtue of having this pulley right here, I now get something like 90%, 80% efficiency with my haul. I also tend to get the least amount of rope creep with this when I uh, reset after hauling. So if I pull rope in, it kind of immediately stops right there when I transfer the load back onto this device. So yeah, the micro traction, the nano traction, the pull, uh, pro traction, I don't tend to use on glaciers that much. I tend to only use that for big walling, but the nano traction, the micro traction, I use an awful lot in um, Alpine crevasse rescue land. And so these are still my favorite devices. Plenty of other people say they're their favorite devices. There are plenty of other options. You have Rope Man by, um, made by DMM. I'm pretty sure it's made by DMM. You can comment below if I got that wrong. Or the Idlerid Spock is another classic one. But all these companies have different sort of one-way pulleys. And I really like this one too because I can release it and make a normal pulley out of it. So... You just get a lot of options with that one way and a lot of efficiency with it. So this is definitely my favorite for hauling systems. Okay, so just because I feel like I want to add this one in, this one's like totally useless, but um, I can take this rope, flip it over like so, and then I invert it and I can clip that into carabiner so that way it travels up the spine like this. Then I can take another carabiner Clip it to both the oh whoop, clip it to both the strands and then I lift this up and clip it to the spine. You lock both of them. And there you have another hitch that locks in on itself. So I can pull it this way, but no rope goes through, and I can pull it the other way as my brake strand. Does anyone by chance actually know what this hitch is called? It may I think it may be called the Stuflisser hitch. And um, it's also a big thing in Italy, I think. A lot of mountain guides use it there. But this works as a progress capture as well. It's just an extra hitch. So you know, work with that if you guys want. But if you know the name of it, leave a comment because I can't figure out the name for it at all. Okay, guys, there you have, I think, seven or so progress capture devices. You can experiment around, put it in your own crevasse rescue system with the equipment that you carry with you. Again, I personally just like that micro traction so much. It's, it's very nice. It's worth carrying around in the mountains with you if you ask me. Uh, but just uh, experiment around and sort of figure out which one works best for you. Sorry about the road noise. Yep, Highway 2 is right over there. So I'm kind of like stuck in the shade with the heat of the day right here. But I'll do my best to try to edit that out. Hope you guys got something out of this video. I have plenty of other videos talking about all sorts of things. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And I'll see you in the next one.